on in while we're doing this. So it looks like we're live from the Digital Pedagogy Lab in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Um, the sessions are all wrapped up, so why don't I pass it over to Christina, Sherry, and, and Leo to introduce themselves, and Bonnie should be joining us soon. Okay. Um, I'm Sherry Spalitz, and I am uh, a physical education specialist at the American International School, and I have had a wonderful time here. Uh, I'm Christina Hendricks. I teach philosophy at the University of British Columbia here in Vancouver, BC, Canada. And I'm Leonardo Flores. I am a professor of English at the University of Puerto Rico in Mayaguez, and I specialize in electronic literature. And I gave a little little uh, workshop on Twitter bots here uh, yesterday. Yeah, the and buzz about the Twitter bots time. was was great. So when do I go uh, left to right from my screen? So we'll go Autumn, and then we'll go Helen, and then we'll go Sue. Hi, guys. My name is Autumn Keynes, and I am the Associate Director of Academic Technology at Capital University in Columbus, Ohio. And I'm also a co-director of Virtually Connecting. Hi, I'm Helen DeWard. I'm uh, an instructor at Faculty of Education in Central Ontario in Canada, and I am on location about a block from the beach where uh, my family is barbecuing. <laughs> wow, and I'm very jealous. <laughs> I'm Sue Beckingham from uh, the UK, England, so I live in the north of England, Sheffield, and work at Sheffield Home University. Um, it's 11.30 here and very dark outside. Um, so I teach in departments of computing. Um, I teach digital marketing and professionalism and communication. So the soft side skills to, um, to computing. And I'm Ken Bauer, originally from close to you there. I'm originally from Victoria, but I've been in Mexico here in Guadalajara for about 22 years. And it's beautiful outside, and my family are eating. But I'm here because all my friends are here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Ken. Oh, we've got hey, a new Bonnie, person. you came. Great. Yes, and we're just introducing ourselves. Is it my turn? Yes. Yes, yes it's I'm your turn. Jewish, and I uh, am from Prince Edward Island, but I am delighted to be here in beautiful Vancouver, where I lived a long, long time ago, revisiting my old haunts and uh, meeting up with awesome people that I haven't gotten to be in person with before. So, and all of you awesome people out there. Wonderful. So what would you like to talk about? We, we started talking to Leo about his Twitter bots a bit yesterday, and you might want to talk about that, or as well as the sessions you've been running, Bonnie. Um, I would love to hear about the Twitter bots, because I did not, I actually didn't go to, uh, to the workshops yesterday, because I was getting ready for today. Um, I'll just quickly, my track was literacies, and we spent three days talking about digital literacies, media literacies, uh, digital practices, digital polarization, data literacies. Chris Schaefer ran really a lot of today and sort of uh, led us through um, a very, very powerful um, set of kind of pieces of information that right before lunch we were all just kind of like, so we just crawl in a hole. <laughs> I, I saw the mic drop tweet, and I was getting just yeah. little glimpses, but it looked powerful. Um, but then in the afternoon, we brought it kind of back together, did some practices that people can use. And then I talked um, about change leadership, and particularly about my Anakin 2.0 idea. Um, and just, just as ways of like, look, there are things that we can do together that we can't do alone. Alone, all we can do is be utterly overwhelmed by some of the media ecosystem that we're in, but there are small things that we can do together to help each other understand better, to make changes in practice, um, changes in perspective. And I think that Jesse's opening to the day with his queering open keynote, which was like powerful and long, long overdue, um, because that whole field of open, um, I think, is, is very much in need of of that conversation around who belongs and who gets to be in these conversations and a refocusing so that it is much more on on who and not on what um, open means. And I see that as relevant to some of that media literacy, data literacy conversation as well. I think there's a, a really important 
call there that I, I want to listen to and I felt deeply called in by. Wonderful. Since there's there is so a few of us, you can pretty well go open mic, Sue and Autumn. Helen, not so much because you got all that wind noise. Yeah. <laughs> there is a recording of Jesse's keynote. I don't know where it is housed, um, but I it's on the Digped hashtag, D I G P E D. If anybody wants to see that, because it was yeah, I'm really, looking really forward powerful. to that as well as Russell's. I haven't watched her keynote from the other day. Yeah, Russell's keynote is also very powerful. Yeah. yeah. I haven't watched um, Rizzles, but I did watch Jesse's today, and it was it was really powerful. It, it was one of those moments where I think somebody has has spoken up at a particularly topical time about mm -hmm. an issue that is much bigger than any single conference and and all of those things, but just speaking to a particular space that hasn't been articulated and and opened up to date, mm -hmm. and so it felt for me like a real privilege to be in the room for that um, because it felt like one of those moments when things have the possibility of changing, when a little door opens and you go, oh, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, now I gotta go watch it. Bye. <laughs> I will. Yeah, it, was, um, it was neat. It was a great day. I, I had the delight of having a very full track full of really interesting people from all kinds of backgrounds, including um, folks who really came into the literacies track overtly without a great many self-identified digital literacies or necessarily an interest in developing them. And uh, so the, the one um, person who started off by kind of when he introduced himself, he had said that you know he really he really wasn't sure about all this stuff, and he had some some ideas about digital that he shared with us, and um, he intentionally didn't do any of these things. He ended the three days by saying, "Okay, can you invite me to that Slack after all?" Wow! Um, <laughs> Very so nice. I, I really appreciated his open mind, and uh, yeah, it was pretty. That that just That's you know, special. Hope that we can. Continue to connect, I guess, and that I think that humanness of mm -hmm. what um, what Digiped is eventually resonated to the point where because I think many many people have a sense of that the technology is this cold anti-human mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. and when technology is used and wielded as a cold and anti-human thing, I have very very little interest in it, and 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 very much a an interest in subverting it. Um, but at the same time, it has given me connections with all of the people like, who like right now, on this Bonnie. call. Yeah. Right? Like, um, I, 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 I joked about it, but my family's out there eating. But this, this is yeah. Well, I, I won't say equally friends, important, right? but this is very important. These are my friends, and yeah, yeah. it matters. And you know, uh, I bots. In addition to bots, uh, electronic literature, which is sort of the larger field that I'm, I, I, I do research on and of which bots are a genre, really is about exploring creativity with language in these digital environments. You see, it's a human impulse to write, to create. We write on anything we can, skin, walls, clay, paper. Uh, we did paper and, and we're still doing paper, right, for a few centuries, but, but now, now we have digital. Now we have digital media and, and when you explore the possibilities of writing in digital spaces, you're able to tap into the potential. You can write language that moves. You can write language that changes over time. You can write things that are interactive and involve the reader in what's going on. You can write things that are networked and connected to all sorts of data. And you have genres that emerge that are unique to these digital spaces. The bot, for example, I mean, I was talking about Twitter bots in my workshop, and if you go to my website, there's a link to a resource that will allow you to, it's on the Digiped uh, hashtag as well, but it has pretty much my tutorial on a, on a shared Google Doc that people yeah. can go see. Yeah, I see that right up on your, on your website now. Yeah, I put it up right there so it would be easy to access. Um, that has been remarkably empowering for the twine for for 
the trans community. There's actually quite a bit of, of trans uh, LBGTQ community members that, that express themselves through Twitter bots. Twine is also another important recent platform that has given a voice to a lot of authors from queer communities. So, so it opens up spaces and, and different communities uh, explore them creatively, collectively, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, wonderful things happen from that. So I'm very interested in that creativity and, and how it's powerful for human beings. Wonderful. And and I can really um, kind of everything you say really resonates for me, Leo, because I I encourage my students to do digital stories, and it really takes them outside of um, the, the normal writing with text and and looking for ways to meaningfully communicate a message that is 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 freed from the text the bounds of uh, boundaries of text so I really it, it, what you talked about really resonated for me I never considered bots as a form of uh, of literacy though yeah well the nice thing about this cheap bots done quick platform that I was using is that it's super simple uh, it just shows you very basic coding variable data set just with those two things, you can make remarkably sophisticated little bots, uh, even that are interactive. And just with that, I mean, I've, I've taught it in my classes several times. My students produce uh, many bots, whether they're creative or activist or functional or just humor. Uh, you know, when you create a bot, you're creating a character. It's, it's sort of an extension of literary tradition, really. Because oh, literature, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I love that. In stories, characters do things, mm -hmm. right? Right. And what they do has been done. Um, but in so so, you can only tell the story of what somebody or what a character did. Mm -hmm. When you create a bot, you're creating, you're programming behavior into a character mm -hmm. that is there and can act. <laughs> it's Without amazing. You. And it's, it's fascinating in, in the sense that a lot of the conversation that we had with um, Chris Schaffer today in my track was about, you know, many of the other much more negative effects mm -hmm. of bots, particularly at scale, the ways in which they are mm -hmm. deployed intentionally to um, affect algorithms and media and ads that go out and sort of they're part of a, a very problematic revenue stream and they can be, I know personally, they can be used to seed attacks and hate. Um, at the same time, I think, to because I have probably begun to see them solely as kind of negative, inhuman. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that reminder that I need to continually be reframing um, my own responses to things. I think the piece about keeping it small like the bot, the bot for for you is a small entity as opposed to a big business bot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're they're handcrafted, right? They're this artisanal little yes. creation that somebody creates, and it expresses a range of possibilities. Artisanal bot. Yeah, Peoples yeah. talks about um, artisanal ed tech. Sure, and you can keep I coming back and, and modifying it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Changing the story. I mean, one of my favorites is this little bot called Magic Realism Bot. And yeah, it generates that. these magic realism narratives that are just, just they. it has over 100, I think 100,000 followers, maybe it's 70 some thousand followers. But it each little narrative, I mean, just kind of blows minds. It's this beautiful generator and and there's so many so many others like that right. i mean we're talking hundreds and thousands uh i follow hundreds i'm interested in the artistic and literary one and uh -huh. they kind of it's good that there's a sort of positive creative response to all the negative bots because they really give bots a bad name mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they've been abused and and used very 
very negatively for sure. So last year in um, Fredericksburg, I was in Audrey Waters' track, and um, we spent a day building Twitter bots. And before that, I had um, very much like Bonnie this idea of like Twitter bots just being these like annoying things or sometimes um, predatory kind of things. Um, but we we because it was the action track, and we were looking at activism. We looked at um, protest bots, and um, mm -hmm. And we read an article from Mark Sample beforehand about what makes a, a, a bot a, an activist bot, you know, and we gave some examples of some different things. And yeah, I mean, you can, it's not, it's not something you can simplify. It is a very deep and rich subject for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that was the John Henry bot. I still follow. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the the Black Eyed Tech Cat bot. We but we built that during. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we should be following the bot you built today, Leo. Yeah, what's the sure, bot sure, today? why not? Check it out. What's I mean, the name of it? The nice thing about following the nice thing about following bots is that you it's like hanging art on your Twitter stream. Mm -hmm. You know, you're mixing in a little a little something of that bot's content every hour every half hour every however frequently it posts but i mean like there's one bot that generates colors i think it's called every color and yes. you know you have the hexadecimal sure. system is just six characters right so mm -hmm. it's pretty easy to randomly uh pick one of each and, and generate ah, an image that, that renders a color sure and and it is amazing how pure and simple and beautiful that is so what was the name of the bot you built today so that they can follow it? It's called, uh, what, what's the name? DigPed Bot. All Digpad right. DigPed Bot. Bot. Okay. Yep, mm -hmm. there it is. Yep, somebody shared it. Digpad Bot, excellent. Yep. Yeah, I now, saw that earlier. Thanks. I'm interested in, there's something, like you talk about bots as characters, and I was just, one of the things that really resonated for me today Sherry started off our day with some like awesome, just kind of moving, getting in our bodies. And then in many ways, Jesse's keynote continually referenced back the reality that we are all embodied and embodied differently. And I'm not trying to set up a, like a simple binary. I'm just, I'm interested in the tensions there between, I guess, something about digital engagement and characters that are entirely disembodied. And what mm. kinds of tensions that raises for those of us who need to live and be in these spaces and yet are embodied and differentially with, within different power structures. I have no answers to this. This was just what my brain did. <laughs> like, um, great, Sherry, great thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry, what do you think about that? <laughs> As the person who led us through our like activity, yeah. um, um, it, you know, what's interesting is that I think having again, recognizing that we, ha that we have a body, that we're in a body, um, is something that particularly in a space where, in a conference space where you're, we're all very head heavy, mind heavy, um, really coming back to, oh yeah, I, I have a body. And so mm -hmm. in a similar way, I think when we engage with, with, with different aspects of digital media, that being able to see, oh, this is, you know, hearing the bad things about bots, but also saying, wow, this, this is also a bot. So that, that we need, as you said, you know, those reminders that are alongside, you know, so you can have that, that artwork in your timeline that uh, also um, is, is next to, you know, what may be, yeah, just something that's just being generated for other purposes. And not as possible, yeah. yeah. Well, the other thing is, and, and I don't want to make this dominate this conversation on bots, <laughs> Many bots and, and cheap bots done quick can't do this. It's, it's a fairly simple tool, rudimentary even. But uh, many bot makers tap into, say, the, the Twitter API. And there's this, wonderful, there's this wonderful bot called Pentametron by Ranjit Bhatnagar, mm -hmm. in which it detects tweets that happen to be in iambic pentameter. It, it sends it through a dictionary. Wonderful. It, it, it you know, detects the meter. Yeah. And then when it detects one of those tweets that is an iambic pentameter, it holds it in a database. And when another one emerges that rhymes with it, it retweets oh. them both at the same time. 
Oh so my gosh. I'm gonna start tweeting, and I am. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so like an experiment going forward, we should right, all try it. I need to, of course, read. The, Re I have to review. Remind like, myself. Right, I, I believe am that Shakespearean language. Yeah. It's about where I'm it at. is. Yeah. So so basically, it's generating this sort of Shakespearean couplets, uh, going on like it's been going on for years. And it's wonderful. It creates these like juxtapositions mm -hmm. between tweets that have absolutely no relation to one another, but come from very human places. Mm -hmm. This is where I want to cycle mm -hmm. back. Someone tweeted about this, and right. it could be about their day, about whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's placing completely different people in conversation. And we conceptually, our minds can't help us create a relation from that juxtaposition. And it's often a humorous response, but there's also beauty. There's also uh, uh, really, I don't know, just plain delight in it. Right, plus the juxtaposition in time because you stored that and then it's not gonna come out till later when the, the trigger happens. Yeah. And then that person who sent that tweet like last week or a month ago, all of a sudden that comes back in and there. Well, it's pretty fast because it's actually, Streaming, it's it's rolling, sifting through ten percent of of the Twitter stream, so right. it's quite topical. I remember when the when the I mean, whenever there's a major sort of either joyous or traumatic event, uh, Pentametron reflects that sort of topical uh, thing. So so it's also sort of a poem, a poem distilled from this moment. Mm -hmm as seen through Twitter. So there's there's these there's these neat neat things where it reminds us that it's connected to to real world and real bodies and real people tweeting and sharing their experiences. That's a great point. I, I have a question actually for Sue because Sue you're up at like it's almost midnight for you, right? Um, right. That's what, what so what is compelling you to keep stay up until midnight for this? I, I mean I'm just I'm because I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm crazy. <laughs> no, I, I've been part of the um, virtual connected community for for a while now. So I've been a virtual uh, or a, a virtual buddy for conferences. Um, so I keep seeing these things come up in in my feed, and it's like, wow, this is really interesting. And then, oh. It was going to be there, and it's like, wow, that, that's really great because you know we get to meet. I'm and we, we will meet in September when you come to um, to England for Alt C conference. Sue, I'm so excited about that. Um, <laughs> part of that that actual I think uh, Facebook conversation about oh we get to meet Bonnie no we don't get to meet Bonnie turned out that uh, my keynote got moved from virtual to face to face. So to face -to -face. I didn't realize yeah. that. Yeah. I saw mm -hmm. just the first part of that conversation and I thought it was a virtual keynote. So they moved it. Yeah, they actually moved it. Um, they've been really wonderful and they were trying to do something interesting kind of with a virtual keynote. And so I um, had the privilege of being part of something with Dave White and um, Pete. Peter uh, Bryant um, that happened at the LSE. It was a, a hackathon and I came in and did like a little five minute provocation kind of like Audrey and a number of other people did yesterday mm -hmm. in the open track here. Yeah. Um, and they had invited me to keynote, I think partly based on, they were thinking of a virtual keynote and so I had said, hey, you seem to be able to talk to people that you can't see. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, why don't we give this a shot? And I thought that's exciting, but then, you know, and I mean, it's always great to have the opportunity to speak anyway, but frankly, when people kind of said, no, we'd really like to see her and have her come, and it turned out that I was able to do that in my schedule, I was thrilled. Um, you know, I recognize that probably there are lots of ways in which conferences do need to begin thinking about more and more types of virtual connection, um, excuse me, like you folks offer, but at the same time, I'm pretty excited to get to put my arms around some people. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's just, I was just going to say, so it's, it's, it's Twitter really, Twitter's just kind of opened up the world, um, made all these connections possible and, you know, the, the invitation's there, you can, you can jump in, so staying up for, you know, a few hours later, um, it's not much of a hardship, is it, when you can have these interesting conversations and 
fascinating things about bots which I had no idea you know I'm just looking up them up now so you know you come away learning something new every time so yeah it's a privilege and um, yeah it's good well thank you for that I, I was just I, I thought wow what <laughs> I will say that last year uh, during Fredericksburg that I also was up mm -hmm. at midnight in Vienna yes, because, but I but I also got to be in conversation with Audrey, with Tressie, with Jesse, and Sean, and and those were, I mean, I just was just I almost couldn't speak. I was yeah. so thrilled. So it's cool to be at this end. Oh, it's George. It's George. Yay, George is okay. here. Hey. Hello, Autumn uh, saw me online doing something and went and found me. So <laughs> I said, get over here, George. <laughs> Come on over. It was, it was really, what did it was the artisanal ed tech bot thing. <laughs> All right. It's, it's like, well, that could only happen when a, a certain type of group of educators gets together because you, <laughs> you, you could get two out of those three things, but not all three, right? <laughs> How are you, George? Hey, doing good. How are you all? Okay. Really great. Yeah, great. Really, really, really great. Great to see you, see you all. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm looking forward to next week. I'm going to be in Fredericksburg. So. Are you? Yeah, so oh. I, I, had, I had to pick one. And... Um, he, oh, I guess I better ask. Did did Ryan make it? Did uh, did does that Ryan? Uh, we had one of our librarians uh, from Cal State Monterey Bay. That is sounding the I I when, hmm. when we I were in like, um, Robin's track at virtually connecting and people were going around introducing themselves. Somebody said that they were from Cal State Monterey, and I was like, huh. Yeah. So oh, I, I think I didn't catch the name, but I wonder if right. somebody from your track. Uh, so Robin Strack, there's actually no one in this conversation oh, from Robin. Right. Yeah, Brian probably did make it, but none of us <laughs> right. apparently yeah. uh, made it to Brian. Yeah. So, hi, Brian. Um, no, no, so it's, glad it's, you could it's join Brian. Us. Oddly, it's uh, it's R Y N E, Ryan. Uh, hmm. uh, and yeah, and, uh, uh, he's uh, uh, he says he's uh, not actually named after a Chicago Cubs player, but there's a long story behind that. <laughs> There, we don't believe actually, him. We think he's and, just making yeah, that exactly. up. <laughs> we don't, we, yeah, we don't believe him. <laughs> so you know what I want to know? I, what I want to see a close-up of? I see some folks have their Lego avatars, and I remember that from last year, and I'm just kind of curious because I think they're adorable. Can we can we see some of them a yeah. little closer? Well, I'm a bearded Lego pirate. Here you nice. go. There you go. <laughs> kind of like a space Jedi pirate. Adorable. <laughs> Hey, that's awesome. Yeah, mine is, uh, sorry, I'm going to squeeze in here. So um, I can't remember the person's name who made this, but I'm just holding a coffee cup. Uh -huh. Because um, when I arrived on Friday morning, I was like, oh, my God, the coffee is gone. It's out. How yeah. can this be happening? And then <laughs> the, sky is falling. the sky is falling. So he made me a coffee cup. Yeah. And it's still <laughs> empty. <laughs> we got <laughs> more the next day. There was lots of coffee day two right. and three. Too. I heard about that. Someone said they are smugly tweeting because they don't drink coffee and everyone was running out of coffee. Somewhere. <laughs> I wasn't there for the Lego thing, so I have my uh, usual David Bowie pin on, which is my yeah. avatar. <laughs> <laughs> you know David Bowie is your spirit animal. So. <laughs> my Patronus, at least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do want to say a word about the swag here. Okay, first uh -huh. of all, the name tags are awesome because yeah. they're the ma they're magnets. Yeah, and they are just so. I can't wait to wear this elsewhere. I don't care if I'm on the street. Hey, everybody, look at my name tag because it's so cool. Um, and mine yeah. says literacy. It's like I'm literate. <laughs> <laughs> mine does too, and I'm thinking that I might just wear it on the plane tonight. <laughs> I mean, this is one heck of an icebreaker. Yeah, right? for sure. <laughs> it is. It's a lot of fun. I like that exercise a lot. This is fantastic. I wish I had mine to share with you all. It's a little, uh, I'm not sure exactly where it is. I should probably dig it up because I'm going to be in Fredericksburg for the last two days. So I'm just going to be oh, there on Thursday oh, and Friday. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's, a, uh, it's a warrior mermaid with. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Uh, 
that's 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 really just totally cool the warrior mermaid and, and I, you know it's like okay i'm ready for this i'm ready for this now so do you uh, make do you make your own or does somebody make one for you you have a conversation with somebody and as you're having a conversation there's this pile of legos um and you just pick stuff that they've talked about and kind of put it together and the only problem is if you don't grab your stuff quickly enough, like there's not much left. Mm -hmm. oh, right. <laughs> so you're like, well, I'm giving you this hat because I can't find anything else. <laughs> you're now a cowboy. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Helen, to answer your question, yes, someone else should ideally make it for you mm -hmm. based on your conversation. Yes. Yes, that's, right. that's, that's the plan. That was very fun. There's maybe something that. metaphorical about that, that like if you wait too long and you lose. You don't so, participate. <laughs> Some of the so there, there's a way zero so Lee, way whoa. <laughs> Leo, Leo, there's a real story to yours then. My, yeah, my advice is fly your geek flag early. That'll give them a lot of good information yeah. to build from, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if I like that metaphor, but it's there. <laughs> I had to laugh when I heard Autumn say, like, so she and George at least are going to be in Fredericksburg next week. Here we are at the end of, like, three fabulous, intense days with these wonderful people, right. and I'm like, oh, I'm not going to Fredericksburg. Me too. Oh. So, no. <laughs> no, but I mean, this is just, I think it, it's, um, that whole fear of missing out piece, right, is something yeah. that all of us have to navigate yeah. in all kinds of ways. I get to go to England to see Sue next month. The person can't be any, everywhere anyway, and I know that. Um, but it's it's really interesting how having these close ties that I value also does mean that I I need to kind of continually remind myself that things can happen without me, and I can join in mm -hmm. in peripheral ways that are still valuable to me. Um, mm -hmm. which is why I value what you folks do. Yeah. 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 It's funny. And I got to say, one of the things, too, when you guys were talking about the keynote, I was like, I'm not even going to be able to go to Alt. But I remember reading that, and I was just like, oh, man, Bonnie can't go and be there. Like, I know she would love to be there, and I know the people there would love to be with her. And I, I did get to go to London to OER 17, and I got to meet Sue, and I got to meet some other folks that we, you know, um, talked to across the ocean there. and. And it was just, it was really like this moment of, you know, even though I'm not going to be there, I was feeling bad. I was like, I want her to be there. <laughs> Thank so you for the promo for me. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, I've got to jump in with something because I was talking to my next door neighbor this morning about uh, the fact that you all were here and, or in Vancouver and that I'm going to Fredericksburg. And he's not connected except for being the ne next door neighbor who knows uh, that I teach. And um, he's going to be in Virginia next week on a bike trip with a couple of his buddies. So we kind of started talking about, uh, oh, yeah, but we've got to kind of watch each other's backs and so on, which I know that Jesse was talking about in his keynote today is, you know, in maybe indirectly or directly, right, uh, um, with his uh, um it, I what I took to my neighbor because I saw about ten minutes of Jesse's keynote was that yeah we've got to watch each other's backs because we're in this era where uh, you know as educators having an opinion as educators being public as you know uh, a, the entire range uh, of orientations genders everything else going on. Um, with Thursday's tweets, with you know everything that is just driving us batty these days, and uh, uh, so in Virginia, um, I said, okay, and we have to watch the news because south of where we're going to be in Charlottesville, um, they said after the last Klan rally that they're going to do another one on August twelfth. So that means that right at the end of the week folks are going to be gathering again down to, not that far south of where we're going to be at UMW next week. And, mm. and so my neighbor and I got to talk about that a little bit today, right? Um, mm. Because he's going to be in Virginia, right? So it's not like he's going to be watching from California. Um, so um, all of those things came together. And one of the reasons I said, yes, Autumn, I'll pop in today, uh, was uh, to see everybody, uh, you know, and, and chat a little bit, but also say, boy, I'm glad that we exist, honestly, 
this, you know, this, um, and you know, zeitgeist, this phenomenon called um, um, digped, right? And you can call it what you want uh, because of all the other Ds that are kind of interconnected with digped, like DML and all the others. But it's like we're some kind of a community that's, and it's very important that it exists across time and space now, <laughs> right? So important. Yeah. Thanks, George. And, and I and I really and I really didn't. I wanted to be a lot more lighthearted about it, but that anyway, that's where we went. So the oh, let me add the lighthearted part. The other part of the conversation, um, the neighbor has two little miniature yappers, right? <laughs> These really cute little dogs. And yeah, some I, of us I, have children, George. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't talk about them that way when things are being recorded. Yeah, these are these are the four-legged kind. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> as opposed to the two-legged kind. But here's the thing: I had a dream about them last night. They were in. They were at a conference, but the neighbor didn't bring them. Robin had them. <laughs> so Robin had the two dogs. And so I'm going, that's fine. You know, they're at the conference. <laughs> you know, Robin's because at the she's conference. In the open track. Super yeah, dogs. Always, always makes well, sense. I've been sharing an Airbnb with Robin for the past two days, and I will say they've been very quiet. Good. <laughs> yeah. but, here's the, but one of but but in the dream, one I'm so I'm at the conference, everything's proceeding, and one of the dogs barfs on my leg. <laughs> so so this is, and and it's all so it's all I guess very realistic in a lot of in a lot of ways. You know, okay, we're at a conference. Robin's at the conference. She's got two dogs that came out of nowhere, except they're the neighbors' dogs. And you know, all of that, all of that together. There's no real ending to this because it's a dream. Except that I had to kind of suck it up, clean up my leg a little bit, and get on with the conference. So that's. <laughs> I'm looking forward to your tweets later this week, George. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, so if anything like that even be, looks like it's going to happen in Fredericksburg, the tweets will follow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I hope no one pees on your leg in Fredericksburg. Um, no. I'm glad that you. I'm glad you came today. I'm glad you said those things. I'm glad that you love us enough to dream about us as a community. Um, yeah. I just I love talking to you guys. I I'm happy to connect today. I have to slip out. Um, yeah, and I think I'm we're running say, right on time. Thank you so much, gonna, Bonnie. They're going to close us out of the room too. So. Thank you, Leo. We Thank you, Christina. Go. Thank you, Thank Sherry. you. Thanks Thank you so much. It was nice. Soon, Sue. Pleased to meet you all. Take care. Travel safe back home. Bye, yeah. guys. Leo, Love thanks. Leo. Thanks for the Buen viaje, Leo. Gracias. Bye. Gracias. Bye. <laughs> all right. We'll let them drop off and we can continue as long as we like. Sue probably wants to go to bed because it's late yeah. there. So, yeah, it's adding, <laughs> adding eight hours from, yeah, here, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, just after midnight. <laughs> I think just adding to, to what you said, George, it's, it's you know, boundaryless. Boundaries don't don't matter when we're doing digped it's it's common conversation and that's what really catches me that's why i'm sitting here in the outside a block away from the beach today because this this conversation is really important for me to be part of no and, and it's really important i mean i joke that my family's outside my brother-in-law and sister-in-law probably don't get it what how important these conversations are but my wife does and my kids do and and, and it is really important to have these conversations together with our with our families. No. I think so. And I'm in a place right now in my um, kind of personal larger conversation about these kind of things. And I'm finding that it's really important to be explicit about the digital. It's really important to be critical about the digital. And when you assume the digital, like I used to always think the threat was if you ignored the digital. And I think that we're to the point now where it's really hard mm -hmm. to do that, right? <laughs> but I think almost like just as, um, just as easy to do is to assume that it's gonna be there and to assume that it's gonna be, you know, one way or the other or to make these kind of broad assumptions um, and I see people do it all the time and I, it's, it's really, you know, working with folks like you guys and, and, you know, those folks that are in Vancouver right now that, you know, when you take the critical deep look, when you really consider the digital, when you consider, um, different aspects, different functionalities, um, you know, Helen says it's great to be here without borders, but you know, the, the digital provide, there's lots of borders in the digital, right? In terms of, 
uh, you know, the, just the, the interfaces and the technologies, um, the companies that run those, you know, and so to, um, to deeply consider all of those different um, facets, I think is really important and it means a lot to me to be, mm -hmm. you know, here with y'all. Yeah, definitely. And those that didn't make it, we miss you for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I, I guess I, I want to throw one thing out uh, that we that may come up next week because it's bugging me this morning. Um, um, uh, I'll go about this not too roundabout. I'll, uh, here's the punchline. Okay, so a while back, um, Jonathan Reese, who many of you know, uh, um, University of Colorado, and I forget which campus, um, uh, but Jonathan Reese and his counterpart, Jonathan Horitz, is it? Um, uh, wrote an article uh, a few months ago for uh, AAUP, uh, you know, American Association of University Professors, uh, basically, you know, that particular union. And somebody, the, um, Hank Reichman, the um, head of the union, basically, you know, resurrected that piece because something's upset him about EdTech. And I don't know what the something is, but he pulled that piece up from May, which is basically the Jonathans being themselves, you know, and, and <laughs> if you know uh, Jonathan, he actually challenges us on educational technology and all things digital all the time, right? But, you know, he challenges it kind of from the inside, <laughs> if, if you will, uh, to kind of keep us honest. And what, Ra uh, what Autumn was saying reminded me of that. Uh, and um, I'm going, well, why did he bring this up? because it's really an article that is kind of an anti LMS article, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's that kind of a challenging technology article, not like students shouldn't be using their devices, not that kind of a challenge, right? <laughs> it, it was, it's, which is something you do here sometimes. And I'm, I'm wondering, well, what, you know, why did this come up? And I have no idea why it came up, but now I have to keep my ears open on the union activist side to find out why did this come up today because that was an article from May and Hank mm -hmm. thought it was important that it needed to be retweeted this morning. So what's up? And there, cause it's like, okay, he's been doing this a long time. There's always something back there. And, mm -hmm. and so uh, now I'm wondering what do we do next? So uh, for Autumn, if I should bring that article <laughs> along or bring it, bring it up next week, <laughs> then you know why it came up. <laughs> okay. You know, yeah, you, you'll have some context as to why, why it came up and why are we talking about an article that Jonathan's wrote, you know, back in May or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so yep. I, I'll drop, I'll drop a, a link in the, the current DigPed feed so you can see what it was. That'd be yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Let's, uh, let's explore that. Wonderful. So when I, I'll, I'll wrap us up here and uh, let everyone know that we'll be continuing DigPed uh, in the next week here from, from Virginia. So a lot of us will be there. Some of you will be there physically the and we can after. be jealous. The week after, yeah. Yeah, I got another week and then it's the week I start classes. So yeah, it's the week after. But looking forward to seeing all of you there. And if anyone wants to uh, jump in and join us virtually connecting, from DigPed or any other event, go check out the site. And I will close up and thank everybody for joining us today.